Well, I'm gonna make a quick video clip here. I'm just gonna throw it in a video end of a video, but one of these two are being replaced. I want you guys to take your guesses of which one's getting replaced, and then the next video, that'll be the first thing you see is what gets replaced. So take your guess. New Hall 195 an air spreader. International Harvester 1256. Yes, it's missing the emblem there, but take your guess. Which one's getting replaced? All right, welcome back to Turner Farms, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're gonna go through, and I'm gonna show you what in this setup here is getting replaced. I mean, definitely can't tell down there what's getting replaced. No, it's not just a tire that's getting replaced. No, it's not just a piece that's getting replaced. It's either a tractor or manure spreader that's getting replaced. So let's go see what's getting replaced. All right, so I'm not telling you what's being replaced, but obviously whether it's the tractor being replaced or the manure spreader being replaced, I gotta unhook the manure spreader, so let's do that. There, she's unhooked. Let's go. Well, um, tractors backed up into the yard, not fully, but, um, yeah. Brand new manure spreader, Hall 195, obviously. Now, I will say this, it's not exactly brand new. It was more of a dummy unit. It's had like 20 loads gone through it, I believe. But, come back here, you look at everything, it's like, there's still paint on all the paddles, you know, a little bit here in the edges, but still. Double liter, double apron, that's what we wanted. It's a 2020 model. Very, 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 very nice shape. Yes, it does have recap tires on it, but that'll do just fine for what we're gonna do with it. It's in way, way better shape than the other 195 I just unhooked from here. So yes. 1256 is staying and no it's not throwing oil okay maybe it is throwing oil all over the hood but it sat outside for a while and when I went to go start it up it shot all kinds of soot out so that's what most of that, that's what all that is actually but yeah so here's the new manure spreader I might use it tonight I might not we'll find out if I do you guys will be the first to know so let's get her hooked up all right, so I got her running, obviously, and pretty quiet. I got in high right now, and this thing actually has a clean out on it that works, unlike our old one, which oh, crap. didn't work. The clean out did not work on our old one, so basically what the clean out is, is the apron keeps running, but it stops the beaters down there. And it looks like dad's looking for a broken fence, but yeah. And then obviously you got your neutral. Yeah, there you go. And then she's running again. Yeah, overall it's a nice spreader. Now, I'm probably gonna go grease it up. Just doesn't hurt to have extra grease in it. And maybe we'll go use her, so let's get her done. All right, we're using the manure spreader for my first time. Now, Ben and Brand already used it, so we're really gonna make it dirty this time. This is liquid manure. It's been raining for quite a few days and everything's wet. So this thing ain't gonna stay clean long. It's manure spreader. And for some reason, the tailgate wasn't down all the way, so when I went to go pull out, a crap ton of manure fell out on the road, so that's nice. So I guess somebody doesn't put the tailgate down all the way, so that's good to know. Yeah, double beater ain't helping much in this situation. All right, so it's a few days later from the last clip. My Uncle Ben and Cousin Brant tested out the new manure spreader I believe it was yesterday they got two loads out of here and they clean it out Worked good for them happy with it and you can hear 560 moaning in the background Ted and hey that's Uncle Ben there so me and dad made the first two crops off the hay 
So now my Uncle Ben and Cousin Brian are going to make this this crop. I don't know if they'll make the next crop or not. The only reason they're making this crop is because me and Dad are gone today all day. It's Sunday, August 1st. We had to go. We had a family reunion, and we had to go to that. And that was an all-day event. So I'm staying over here in the pit. Ben's got the hole filled in here. He's got some gravel around here to keep the water out of there. Dumb jerseys. Anybody want some jerseys? I'll gladly sell them all. Anywho, um, work on the pit's gonna be starting here probably sooner than later. Ben took a few. I think he took two rolls of concrete or the bricks stone or a wall down here and you move them in front of the silos over there because that's where he's going to mix the feet up since he won't be able to do in here so i'll walk over there and take a quick glance at that so obviously he's got his feet over there and this one over here he's got where he mixes the silage so or this ain't going to be permanent this is just temporarily until you get the pit fixed and it would be nice to, uh, this soil is going to come down before the end of summer. I've said that for the last two or three years, but it needs to come down. But, in all honesty, we're probably going to have to get the pit fixed up first, because you can see it's kind of being used as a wall right now, which is kind of scary, but, yeah, this silo is completely rotten at the bottom. It's, you go on the back side of it, look inside, looks like a woman, or I shouldn't say woman, but it looks like a person with rotten, rotten teeth. And it's just crazy. It's ready to come down. It needs to come down. It's out of the three silos that were here. This is the newest one, but it was in the worst shape. So, silo unloader is completely junk. It's sitting in probably about a foot of silo juice. Rotten to hell. So, yeah. That's how we're going to have to be mixing feed for a while. Unless, until Michael gets his old TMR dug out of his shed. Then I'll get that hooked up and might use that. I don't know. Kind of work nice for over here, but not so much for the bunks in there. But we might revamp them bunks. I don't know. I would love to do over there what we did over here, which is pretty much just build a concrete curb here. So we just basically got a curb, a few posts. I don't know how far apart they are. 10, 15 feet. I don't remember what they are. But in, anywho, just you know, curb, guardrail. Then I can drive a TMR along here and just dump. Or feeder wagon. Whatever. But that would be nice to do over that, over there, you know, take out those bricks or blocks too and get rid of all that. Just revamp it, but that might not be in the budget. Well, it just all depends. We're probably not gonna do it. If we would do it, it'll just be the bunk going towards the wall. But I highly doubt we'll do that, but we're for sure obviously gonna put a floor in the pit. That's first priority, so that way we don't have to use the bags. Even though there's talk, we might do a snappage bag again, because that worked really well. It kept really nice. So, look at them guys munch up. You guys already ate up a majority of your silage. So, but, come over here. Snap, which is keeping very well. I mean, there's not a lick of mold in here at all. I'll just grab this stuff here. It looks amazing. It smells amazing. It smells like snap, which is a great smell. I'll go over here to the corn silage. Corn silage has a wee bit of mold, it looks like, but it's not bad. It's It looks like, it looks great. It's working all good, though, so we're not going to do another silage bag. I don't know if we'll ever do another silage bag again because that pit's big enough to fit all the silage we ever need. And there's talk about downsizing the herd some, which I don't want to do, but I'm not the chief, I'm just an Indian. So, and we got a whole bunch of corn stalk wheels over there yet, too, which we should have tried selling last fall, but they had, didn't want to for some reason. Now we're stuck with them, but yeah, we'll come over here, check the hay, and that'll probably be the end of the video. Oh, yeah, and here's well, Ben's been using the haul silage back and forth from the big to, well, before he was hauling it to the pit, but now he's hauling it to his makeshift feed area there. So, obviously we got the 560 with the 806 engine block in it. He took that off the feed mill, put it on this night old night wagon. I don't remember what the hell these things are. It's not a, it's a flare box type box, but it's got an apron in it. 
So, it works good for that, I guess, until we get the TMR up here. Now you can just use a TMR, obviously. This tracker would go on the TMR. But if you want, if you have a 560 that's a tired engine in it, put an 806 engine block in there. It's a lot of work. You gotta get different frame reels, I believe, and stuff, you know, different pressure. You, know, you have to get the all plates in there and whatnot. And mess, you have to cut out the frame rail here some more, get the drive shaft to fit through there, and all kinds of stuff. You gotta add on to the tin work, too, as well. Unless you find the right size frame rail, so you wouldn't have to add on to the tin work, but there's a pretty big gap in there. It's about five inches. Maybe not quite that, but yeah. Anywho, it makes a good tractor. It's just a lot of work to do that stuff. But it makes a good tractor, so we'll go check the hay quick. So Ben's out there just a giving her. He took her over for Brant, which Ted in this field by herself, which is one tether, takes about eight hours. It takes about six hours, six, seven to cut it, another eight to tether it, because the disc bind can go faster than the tether can. And it takes a long, it seems like it takes ages to tether this field. I used to do it by myself before we had a got a second tether, and it just pff, took all day, it seemed like. Hey, it's looking good. It looks, third crop looks as good as second and first crop. Maybe a bit better than second crop, honestly. But Dad was talking about putting potash on after he gets this made. But he doesn't, he wants to, but he doesn't want to, mainly because the prices of potash has gone up. That's all I've been told. We haven't seen the price increase, but it all looks good. This is some, it's about 10% bloom, maybe not quite 10%, maybe more like 8%, but it's blooming pretty good. But, I don't know, I'm predicting anywhere between 150 to 170 bales off this 65 acres. Which, I'll take it. More money for us. Which... We only go through about 100 bales a year ourselves, which you already have 100 there. It would be nice to just get, you know, like maybe 10, 15 more, just be on the safe side and make sure we have enough. And then we just sell the rest to the horse farmer. Dave Kissick is his name. He runs the horse stables in the Wisconsin Dells there. He pays big money for hay because he used to go all the way down. Oh, I'm trying to think. He went down to like... Grant County, I think, to hay sales, hay barns down there, hay auctions, and bought hay for big money since he couldn't get any hay around here. So he'll pay top dollar for it and above and beyond. So really, all we have to do is cut it, tet it, rake it. We don't have to tet it, but we choose to because he can get it made faster. And he he just comes in, and bales it, removes the bales, which. I wish I was doing that. I'd like doing that, bailing and moving the bales, but yeah. I'll see if I can get some more footage of that. It just all depends when he's bailing because I'm at work throughout the day, and if he's here after I'm done with work, I'll definitely get some video of him bailing, but I think that'll be all for tonight, so take care, take it easy, and thanks for watching. Talk to y'all later. Take care.